Good evening, Stats fans, and welcome back to Stat Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I'm Robert Adut from yaymath.org. Tonight, we've got a real pitcher's duel on our hands. What statistical wizardry will get us out of this pickle? I'll give you a hint. It begins with Z and ends with score. Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers had an amazing pitching season in 2014, striking out a stunning 239 batters, and as such, shrinking his earned run average down to a shrimpy 1.77. Yeah, it was one of the greatest single-season pitching performances in recent history, drawing comparisons to Pedro Martinez's stellar 2000 exhibition when the Red Sox's ace struck out 284 batters, earning him an ERA of 1.74. There are some, and they're mostly Dodger fans, who argue that Kershaw's 1.77 is just as impressive, while another camp, mostly hailing from Beantown, insists Martinez's performance is the superior average since it occurred at the height of the steroid era when hitting was at an all-time high. But with Kershaw and Martinez pitching in different eras, can we even compare their numbers at all? For hope and answers, we go now to infield reporter, my protege, Jordan Cohen. Jordan, have the statistical gods bestowed us with a savior to this existential conundrum? They have indeed, Robert, and his name is the Z-score. Breaking it down like this, the z-score is the number of standard deviations a data value is above or below the mean. If a data value is one standard deviation above the mean, the z-score is one. One standard deviation below the mean makes the z-score negative one. The higher the z-score, the further above the mean that data value is, and the lower the z-score, the further below the mean that data value is. The key here is that by calculating z-scores for both Kershaw's and Martinez's performances, we can directly compare them, and by doing so, measure which pitcher had the better year. Wow. Now, Jordan, how exactly does z-score work its magic? Bring. Great question, Robert. The z-score works by allowing us to remove the relative differences between distributions, giving us the ability to make effective comparisons. Remember, the main issue when comparing Kershaw to Martinez is that they pitched in different eras with different opponents, making it very difficult, if not impossible, to compare their accomplishments objectively. But by finding z-scores for Kershaw and Martinez and comparing them, we're essentially putting their performances on the same scale. At long last, we can compare apples to oranges, or I guess compare uh, baseballs to other baseballs. Something like that. Okay, z-master flex. Chicky, check yourself. Please show me the math. We can find the z-scores by subtracting the mean from the data and then dividing it by the standard deviation. In 2014, the mean ERA was 3.52, while the standard deviation was 0.72. In 2000, the mean ERA was 4.45, while the standard deviation was 0.82. Okay, so that means Clayton Kershaw's z-score for his era was 1.77 minus 3.52, all divided by 0.72, which is negative 2.43. And what this means, Robert, is that Kershaw's ERA was 2.43 standard deviations below the mean. Since a low ERA is good in pitching, that means it's also good to have a low z-score. This signifies that Kershaw's performance is way better than the average. Spoken like a champ. Let's do Pedro Martinez's z-score. We got a 1.74 minus the mean of 4.45, all divided by standard deviation of 0.82. That's negative 3.3 I'm getting. Meaning Martinez's ERA was 3.30 standard deviations below the mean. So, as it turns out, Martinez's ERA was lower within a season's average compared with Kershaw's ERA within his season's average. Since the person with the lower z-score performed better, we can say with a statistical degree of confidence that Pedro Martinez seems to have had a more impressive season. Sorry, Dodgers fans. It does bring a tear to my eye. Drip. To see statistics, bringing closure to some of sports' most difficult questions, Jay. Now, Robert, I'd be remiss if I failed to mention that we can also apply the z-score in relation to the empirical rule. 
You'll remember from last night's episode that according to the empirical rule, roughly 68% of the data are within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% are within two standard deviations of the mean, and about 99.7% of the data are within three standard deviations of the mean. Since the z-score represents how many standard deviations a value is from the mean, we can use the z-score to get an idea of how likely the specific data value is to occur. With Kershaw and Martinez, we saw that both players have extremely low z-scores, meaning we could expect virtually all the other ERA data points to be above their ERAs? Sure enough, we checked the ERAs for every pitcher in both 2014 and 2000 and we confirmed that, in fact, both pitchers had the lowest ERAs in their respective years. That, my friends, is the power of the Z. It's like we're finishing each other's sentences or something. Jordan, as always, good to have you on, man. Thank you, Robert. As always, good to be here. That about does it for another edition of Stat Center. To our friends in the UK, Canada, and the land down under, please pretend I said Z-score the entire time. Otherwise, it's all the same. Keep it one standard deviation ahead of the curve, stats fans. You hearing this, J-Dog?